Hi everyone, Richard Carlton here. In this video, we're going to cover the top 10 need to know items that are part of the FileMaker 18 platform release. My team and I have been working really hard on our new video training courses, and we've come up with our top 10 items of what we think you should know about if you're considering moving up to the FileMaker 18 release. Now, these aren't necessarily the top 10 features. These are the top 10 things that you as a developer need to know about. So if you're a FileMaker developer or an IT support professional, then this video is designed specifically as a brain dump to get you up to speed. So first off, it's important to note that with the release of 18, there is no file conversion. Throughout the history of FileMaker, sometimes when you upgrade from one version to the next, there's some sort of file conversion. And of course that leads to stress because people have to make sure that the conversion works correctly. So anytime that we can get a new version of the FileMaker platform without going through a file conversion, that's a good thing. Now keep in mind if you're deploying FileMaker Server or FileMaker Pro Advanced on a Mac, the supported operating systems are going to be 10.13 High Sierra or 10.14 Mojave. If you're using 10.12, then you really need to update before you try to install 18. And once again, that goes for Pro Advanced as well as Server on the Mac platform. Now, if you're still using Windows 7, as long as it's SP1 Professional or SP1 Ultimate, I think is what my cheat sheet says right here, then you're still in good shape. You can leverage the latest version of FileMaker Pro Advanced. However, I do recommend that everyone who is using Windows 7 seriously think about upgrading to Windows 10. You'll be much happier. In terms of our favorite features, my team has decided that the number one favorite feature is the file script controls that are part of the 18 release. Starting with FileMaker 18, you actually have precision script steps that allow you to create text files or log files to delete files, to rename them, all sorts of file controls. And this is largely targeted towards creating your own logs or creating your own text files or outputting data in a specific way or in a specific format. It's pretty universal and you're really not limited to what this can do. Now the file controls work on all the clients, including PSOS on server, SASE on server. However, there is no support for WebDirect. However, you can still use WebDirect to call a PSOS script, which means that you can access it kind of backhandedly that way. Now, if you don't know what PSOS or SASE are, then definitely check out our complete FileMaker 18 video training course. The number two feature that we're really liking is the ability to take administrative account management and offload it to a lower level user. Normally you have to have a full administrative account to be able to control other people's usernames and passwords and accounts. But you can designate some people to be kind of pseudo administrators or baby administrators is kind of my informal term for it. But these folks are allowed to manage other users accounts as long as those accounts are not admin accounts. So these baby administrators can manage security accounts, but they don't need to have access to scripts. They don't have to have access to defining the schema or redesigning layouts, etc. You can still restrict that with the admin. So developers can do the development and you can actually designate a kind of a baby admin to manage all the security accounts for the rest of the staff in the organization. That's really a great add on to the product. The next new feature that we're liking is a revised import dialog. The import dialog in the FileMaker platform is really dated and it worked really well and that's why it's been around for so many years, but it needed a refresh and along with the visual refresh, it also has additional new capabilities. So you can actually import files with different sorts of delimiters within the file. You can also control where your auto enter options are triggered in terms of auto enter options for all the fields or just auto enter options for some of the fields. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, these are all the ins and outs of the importing process. And so using FileMaker 18 makes that a lot easier. Now, the next item on our list actually was voted by a number of people to be the number one feature. And really it's kind of a feature, but it's really kind of a code change or a structural change. And specifically what I'm talking about is URL protocols where you can call a FMP URL, say in a browser or in another application and trigger something to happen in FileMaker. In fact, you see this a lot with something like a calendar system within FileMaker. 
A calendar system that lives in a web viewer has to have a way of talking back to FileMaker. Most of the time, this is done with a FMP URL protocol, which means that when the calendar wants to send data back to FileMaker, it does FMP and then it puts the rest of the data into the URL. What's interesting about this is that if you start to install versions FileMaker 16 and then 17 and 18 and maybe 19 someday, well, your operating system might send that URL protocol command to the wrong version of FileMaker. It does happen. In fact, it happens all the time. So what FileMaker did is they said, well, the FMP URL is still in there, but we're also adding a second URL protocol, which is a version specific one. So starting with the 18 release, you can call FMP or you can call FMP 18, which means that if you're on a mobile device like an iPhone or iPad and you're using FileMaker Go, you can call the FMP 18 URL protocol knowing that the client that will act on it will only be 18. This solves a ton of problems and a ton of tech support issues that come up all the time. Now, of course, this fix doesn't retroactively fix all the versions of 17 and 16 and 15, etc., but it does implement a fix starting at 18 where you have a choice of calling FMP or more specifically calling FMP 18, which allows you to precisely control what version of FileMaker is listening for that URL request. Good feature. Now the next item down is something that most of you probably don't know about, but a handful of server folks or IT professionals have heard of, and that's Zabbix. Zabbix is essentially an open source software system that allows you to do monitoring of a server. So Zabbix is its own software package that you essentially install on your FileMaker server, and it basically monitors how your FileMaker server is going, and then it reports that data back to your client so you can see it in terms of charts and graphs and to see how busy the server is. It provides a high degree of detail so you can really see what's going on. Now, if you only have one FileMaker server or maybe two FileMaker servers, then this is something you probably don't want to waste your time on. But for example, my team has 10 or 12 servers that they manage or monitor. In fact, we help customers with more than that. And so if we had Zabbix running on all those servers, then on one screen, we could see everything going on and it could highlight for us the servers that are having trouble. So that's a super cool technology. FileMaker started rolling it out and integrating it kind of stealthily in 17, but it never got much press and no one really talked about it. But starting with 18, they're actively promoting this idea. And we actually have some videos in our training course that we'll talk about setting up Zabbix and using it to monitor your FileMaker server. The next item down on our list is a pin to PDF. That's the idea of having a PDF and adding additional pages to it via script in FileMaker. This is a feature that already exists in Pro, but it's a feature that has been missing in Go. So using a pin to PDF is a supported script command now in FileMaker Go, which is great, yes. The next item list is another Go issue. It's improved barcode support. There are a handful of barcodes that weren't supported in FileMaker's built-in barcode library. So if you're new to FileMaker and you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, in FileMaker Go on an iPhone or iPad, you can use the camera to take a picture or essentially scan a barcode. Now, if you're in a warehouse and you're doing lots of scanning continuously, then you really need a real laser barcode reader that you attach to a computer or a mobile device. But if you're using your iPhone or iPad in a limited way to scan barcodes, then the camera is good enough for that. And of course, that library of software is built into FileMaker Go. So FileMaker Go built in needs to be able to identify and decode the type of barcode you're looking at. Well, there were about four different types of barcodes that had been left out that were becoming popular. FileMaker has added those in. Lastly, if you're a consultant and you're working with a large organization or maybe you're an in-house developer and you're working with a large organization, you can now set up FileMaker Pro Advanced to auto open a specific file automatically for you on startup. So normally what most places do is that they install FileMaker Pro Advanced, Mac or Windows, then they give people a launcher file or a opener file. And this is a little file you double click which tells FileMaker to open up the actual hosted file that lives on a server somewhere. Well, FileMaker is going to save us this step by actually having that happen automatically 
when you open FileMaker Pro Advanced. So instead of you having to double click the launcher or opener file, when you open FileMaker Pro Advanced, it just goes to that destination automatically, kind of bypasses the need for the launcher. Now a final couple need to know items that you should keep in mind. First off, all the products that were released in market with the 17 release have been updated and are released with 18. A number of technologies have been marked for deprecation and they've been marked for deprecation for a very long time and they still haven't been deprecated. So the runtime is still in there for FileMaker Pro Advanced. The PHP and XML gateways, which are really used by a lot of people, they were deprecated a release or two ago. Those are still in the product and will probably be in the product for a while because based on some very simple math, I can tell you there's more than $100 million of websites that are based upon those older gateway technologies. And once again, that's how you take a website and connect it to FileMaker server on the back end to get the data out and present it to a user in a browser in a public setting. So that's for publicly accessible websites, which is a little bit different than WebDirect because WebDirect is similar technology, but it doesn't really require any coding or programming. And it has limited application, mostly for people who work within your organization or maybe trusted outside third party contractors or support personnel. You want them to have access to your FileMaker application. WebDirect is a good way for them to do that. So with 18 release, we do have FileMaker Pro Advanced for Mac and Windows. FileMaker Server for Mac and Windows, and a new release of FileMaker Cloud. FileMaker now calls this FileMaker Cloud for AWS. So essentially, all the products that you're familiar with in 17 have been updated and are released with 18. Additionally, there's been a lot of confusion on this, but there has not been a price change with the FileMaker 18 release. For those of you who remember this, back with the 17 release, FileMaker introduced a fairly minor price change to their product line. Well, some people had price protection for a year or more, and some of those people no longer have price protection. So on average, most people are seeing a 1% to 2% price increase in terms of how much FileMaker costs them. And of course, most of us are seeing the same prices we paid last year as this year. So there's no real price change to the product for the 18 release. So after checking my notes here, that covers all the essential items you need to know about with the FileMaker 18 release. If you have questions or comments, of course, drop us an email at supportrcconsulting. Make sure to subscribe to our videos and check out our complete FileMaker 18 video training. And that's available at fmtraining.tv.